This Hot and Healthy podcast is presented to you by me, Nicole Van Hattem, holistic success coach and best-selling author, and brought to you by the Ginger Camel Media Network. Turn up the volume as we bring you the people and practices that power you to think, eat, thrive. Welcome to another episode of Hot and Healthy, and my guest today is Emily Alp. She is a yogini and a science writer, and she's something very valuable to share with each of us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So we were talking just before we started recording about your health journey and how it resulted in being in this amazing book, this best-selling book, One Crazy Broccoli. And you, in the book, you share your story and you share it with great openness. And I'd love it if you'd share it with the audience today as well. Sure. Um, I was when I was born, I faced some stresses through my mother leaving when I was young and. A lot of different people coming in to raise me and moving around a lot. And underneath that, I had a genetic condition called celiac, which is now becoming more and more, dare I say, popular, but um, relevant to a lot more people in general. And when I was facing it, there wasn't a lot known about it. So I, as a young child, faced allergies, asthma, a lot of physical setbacks, and I was quite weak and suddenly anemic. And I think there wasn't a lot of attention on me, so I just started to become my own little navigator through life. And I used the analogy in the book that I felt like I was a baby sea turtle trying to find the shore. And when I I started to take more responsibility for my own journey, I feel like I was quite young about it because my parents really weren't around. And I started to do a lot of research and and look around for health solutions. And I was looking for a good 15 years before I met an acupuncturist who told me, I think you might want to stop eating wheat. Mm. And I had at that point read so much literature on health that I made the connection that it was probably wheat. And I ardently cut out wheat from my diet. At that point, I started to become what I considered other people to be as normal because until that point I was constantly in pain and it was a pain that I felt really ashamed of talking about and it was in my intestines and not a lot of people like to talk about that mm, and a lot of stigma around a lot of stigma yeah. and there were along the way there um, was kind of a brush with an eating disorder just because I lost so much weight from the food not in taking food and then I became really attracted to the idea of being so skinny And so there were a lot of body image things to solve and a lot of obstacles to start to turn into opportunities. And so that is what I feel more than anything I started to look at as my mode of operation in my life, in addition to sharing what I learned when I turned those obstacles into opportunities. So the the, the turnaround began when you met the acupuncturist. That was the main turnaround. That was when I was 25. So that had been about 12, 13 years of constant pain up until meeting him and just being really secretive and trying all kinds of elimination diets until I met him. And a lot of people aren't really aware of what celiac is. Can you share a little bit about what what is celiac? Sure. It's a genetic condition and it's based on, they can tell you if you have the haplotype or not or if one of your pairs of genes uh, displays something along it that, that indicates that you are a candidate for celiac. That genetic expression or genotype turns into a phenotype, which is uh, basically your inability to produce an enzyme that breaks down the gluten molecule. And when that molecule makes its way through the digestive tract unbroken, your digestive tract responds to it as a foreign object, and and thus a huge immune response results. That immune response is considered autoimmune because you're basically attacking your own tissues. And then your intestines swell, you, become, you, you start to have leaky gut. In my case, my tooth was falling out, my, I was severely underweight, my hair was falling out. I was, it was really about <laughs> maybe just like, I would say, a little more than half of the size I am now. I was very, 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 very thin. You're quite small now. I would say I am, yeah. <laughs> so that would be tiny. I was really tiny, I was really malnourished even though I was eating food. And was the malnourishment because your body wasn't absorbing the nutrition because of the leaky gut syndrome? Exactly. Which was the result of the celiac. 
Yes, and then the big manifestation of the disorder is in the large intestine because by the time the food reaches there, not, so little has happened to it. So your whole digestive tract is, is severely compromised and um, there's a lot of pain involved. And I was going into vegetarian diets and eating wheat glutens, you know, so I was going in the wrong direction with the right intention, but I was constantly investigating what's going on here. And, and I wanted a life. I wanted what I saw around me. And I would stop and say, why, why can't I have this? What is it? And, but I wouldn't stop cold there. I would just say, well, I want it. And just, that was my only direction. And I had misdiagnosis along the way. I was given muscle relaxants, which I threw in the garbage. Um, there were a lot of, of reasons to stop and just say, okay, well, this is my lot. And I just couldn't, I just said, this is, and now that they've started to diagnose it, I just preach it. Because if anybody has symptoms, please go get this haplotype test. Please just see because you could have more of a life than you realize. So if somebody is not diagnosed as celiac, how can they perhaps maybe listen to their own body and notice that maybe gluten is not working for them? Well, I think um, you mean where they could potentially have it, but they, they haven't gone to get the diagnosis. Uh, I would say if you have anything that remotely resembles IBS, for instance, irritable bowel, or like a constipation kind of diarrhea, charade going on, or weight loss, weak, weight loss, even weight gain, because oh, people sure. might be eating to try to get the nourishment that they need. I mean, there were points when I, I gained weight as well, just trying to eat, eat, eat and then it, it was becoming painful, and then I stopped, and that's in the story. Um, but yeah, a lot of bloating because again it manifests in the lower, well, large intestine and again that's not a popular subject so people get really embarrassed about it. They also become very afraid that they're going to have to give up their favorite food. Okay. Yeah. That to me is the biggest obstacle in people's minds. I have to give up my favorite food. What they don't realize is what they gain and what they don't realize are all the options out there and how creative they can get with food as a result of that necessary elimination of gluten. So don't focus on what you can't have, focus on what you can have and amplify that. Yeah. Two things you've mentioned just in this interview that are, that seem to be the, the reason that you're so successful with your health turnaround. One is that you, you didn't stop until you could create the life that you wanted. Mm -hmm. So you didn't take the diagnosis for mm -hmm. a weakness and you didn't stop until you got the answer that you wanted and that you needed to have the quality of life that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And the other one is embracing, well, what opportunities does this provide me with? What food can I eat mm -hmm. rather than what I can't have? So rather than thinking of deprivation, thinking a different kind of abundance. Right. What, if someone is recently diagnosed with celiacs, what would you say to them? I would say, aren't you lucky? Aren't you lucky to know? And aren't you lucky to have this signal that this is the way you can take care of yourself in this world that's giving you all kinds of signals. This is your first signal from within, big signal, to say, this is what I need. Because in a lot of social situations, initially it was very challenging for me growing up to say, Grandma, I'm not eating this stuff. My grandma loved me more than anyone in this world. I thank her every day on my morning with gratitude. And she would all say, what are, are you not eating this time? And she would fix me some food around me. I was lucky to have that love in my life. But people need to love themselves that way and say, you know, even though I'm in a social situation, I'm sorry, I can't eat that. I really can't. And you don't need to tell the whole story. You need to tell yourself the story. I respect myself. I respect my health. I respect my future. And I'm going to put all of my will into my life and into living a life that I know that I deserve to live. And now that I have a big key, I'm, I'm going to drive this car and I'm going to figure out how to do it with grace, you know, because yeah, it's it's you stumble around at first socially. What do I say? How do I? How much of the story do I tell? Do I have to tell the story? And you learn a lot about yourself and others when you do that. You learn that you have every right to say, I don't really, I can't eat that. Thank you. And you don't need to explain to people. So you learn a lot of things in addition to just cutting something out of your diet. With this. And this is where you see the gift. Yeah, I see so many things you can learn about self-respect and. Um, and also just superficially, like when they bring the donuts into the office, you say, I honestly can't eat that. 
you know, and you, you have a reason, and you have a reason, and it's a lot easier automatic self control for me, anyway. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I really appreciate it, and thank you for sharing the book as well. Pleasure. Really great. Thank you. So, thank you for tuning into another episode of Hot and Healthy with Snap TV. Stay tuned for how you can find out how to connect with Emily. She has a lot to share, a lot of gifts, and tune into the next episode of Hot and Healthy. Thanks for listening and special thanks to our audio mastermind, Scott Houston, for mixing today's episode. You can find us at gingercamelmedianetwork.com forward slash hot and at nicolevanhaddam.com.